Hi Bobcats! In this lesson we're going to talk about the shape and data distribution. We've talked about the measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, the mode. We also talked about range. Now we're going to talk about looking at graphs. What does the shape or the distribution of the data tell us? So one way to understand a set of data is to make a visual display which is a good way to see the distribution and shape of the distribution in the data. There are many ways to describe the shape and the distribution. The first is to talk about the clusters. Clusters are data that are grouped closely together. So if you look down here at our, this is a dot plot of temperatures, you can see where each dot represents a piece of data, that the data is clustered between 16 and 18, and there's also a cluster between 22 and 25 degrees. These are data that are close together. They're called clusters. And then we have gaps. Gaps are the numbers that have no data values. So looking at this histogram, you could see that the 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, and the 80 to 89 range, that there is no bar here. That means there is no data for those numbers. This, this is what we call a gap. There is a gap from 50 to 89. Then we have peaks. Peaks are the most frequently occurring values, or the mode. So looking at this histogram, which one occurs the most? Well, it's going to be the bar that's the tallest, which happens to be the 64 to 65 range the tallest would be the peak. So this graph peaks at 64 to 65. Symmetry. You've already learned about symmetry in elementary school. It's where the left side of the distribution looks like the right side. So think of your butterfly. If you cut your butterfly in half, the two sides look alike, don't they? They're symmetric. So this is what we call symmetry. And in our graphs, it doesn't have to be exactly symmetric, just pretty close. So look at our two examples. If I draw a line down the center, this is about the center, you can look at the left side and the right side, compare them, and they look to be about the same, don't they? Therefore, this graph is symmetric. It has symmetry. This is called a box plot. And if you draw a line down the center, you can tell the same thing. The right and the left side look to be the same. So it is symmetric. It has symmetry. Then we have skew. Data that is skewed right has the majority of the data on the left side. Skewed right means that there is less data on the right side. Data that is skewed left has the majority of the data on the right side. So skewed left means there is less data on the left side. So what does this look like? If you can actually draw a curved line around the data, and it will help you determine if it's skewed left or right. You just look for the tail. So if I go on this one, this one is actually not skewed, is it? I could draw a line down the middle, around the center, and the two sides look to be about the same. So this first graph is symmetric. But if you look at this next graph, you just kind of draw an outline, you can tell that the majority of the data appears to be on the left side. So this would be skewed right. This would be a right skew. And this one we said was symmetric. So we do the same thing here. You can tell that the majority of the data is to the right, so this would be a left skew. Okay, let's try this dot plot. The majority of the data is on the right side, so this one would be a left skew. And I talked about the tail. You can kind of see how this kind of flattens out and is long. This is what I call a tail. So the side that you see the tail would be the
the type of skew that you have. Our tail is on the left side, so this would be a left skew. If we do this one, you can tell that there's more of a tail on the right side. So this would be a right skew, which means that the majority of the data is on the left. And looking at the box plots, you want to look for that median line, the line that's in the middle of this box, and you can tell that the longer side goes to the left. So this would be a left skew. Over here, the longer side goes to the right, so this would be a right skew. And when the line's in the middle, you can tell that it looks to be symmetric. Variability. Variability refers to how spread out a set of data is. Range is one measure of variability that we've used. So let's determine if the results of the following situations have variability or no variability. How old are the students at Spring Forest? Well, maybe the youngest is, what, 10 years old? And the oldest is maybe 14? Is that a large spread? Is that a, a lot of different numbers of different ages? No, it's only, what, five different ages that you could be, four or five different ages you could be. So there's not a lot of variability. What about how old Cody's mom is? Could there be a lot of possible ages that Cody's mom could be? Or could there be just a small number of ages that she could be? Well, you need to ask yourself, do you know how old Cody is? You don't. Cody could be three months old. Cody could be six years old, 12 years old, 25. Cody could be 60 years old. So this one would have a lot of variability, right? So this one would be have variability. The first one would have no variability because there's not a lot of ages that a student could be at Spring Forest. How about how many pages are in the books in the library? This one could have a lot of variability too, right? You could have a book that has 20 pages or you could have a book that has 214 pages. So I'm going to put a V for variability. How about how many Skittles are in the back? Do you think if you go out and you buy 10 bags of Skittles that they're going to have, there's going to be a lot of variability in the number of pieces of Skittles in each bag? Well, if the bags are the same size, no, there's not. They're all going to have about the same number of Skittles. So this one would have no variability or no V. Okay, so we're going to kind of put everything together. And we're going to describe the shape and distribution of each data set in these graphs. We're going to talk about if there's any clusters, gaps, peaks, symmetry, skew, variability, etc. All right, so talking about the clusters, you can see that the clusters, that the data, each dot represents a piece of data, that they're all clustered together. So you could just say the data is clustered from between 8 and 13. Are there any gaps? No, there are no gaps. A gap would be if, say, there were no dots at 12. There were no dots here, then you could say there was a gap at 12, but there are no gaps. Okay, what about peaks? Are there any peaks? Peaks are the ones that occur the most. They're the tallest. Think about a, um, a mountain peak, right? Well, the tallest would be at 9, and this is taller than any of the other ones, so this would be our peak. So there is a peak at 9. What do you think? Is this symmetric or is this skewed? Well, our line has actually been drawn for us, and we can see that the tail is going to the right. So the skew would be to the right. The data is not symmetric, and it is skewed to the right. Is there variability in the data? Are there 
a large variety of numbers in our data. No, there's not a lot of variability. The data is just from 8 to 13. That's not a large range or a large spread. If it was 8 to 93, then yes, there would be a lot of variability. Let's do this one. Describe the shape and distribution of each data set. Okay, so this is a different type of graph. It is a box plot. And it doesn't show the individual data pieces. What it shows is the spread of the data. So we can't tell if there are any clusters or gaps or peaks. What we can talk about is the symmetry. Is it symmetric? Is it skewed? Is there variability in the data? Okay. So looking at this, you could tell that the shape is not symmetric because the lengths of each of the box and whiskers are not the same. If you were to draw a line down the center or even look at this middle line here, you could see that the right side is a little bit shorter than the left side. The left side is a little bit longer. And because that left side is a little bit longer, you would say that it is skewed to the left. There's not a lot of variability in the data. You can tell that it only goes from 2 to 10, so that's a very small range. And from the box plot, you're uh, unable to determine if there are any clusters, gaps, or peaks. We talked about that. And that's really all you need to know to be able to describe the shape and distribution of data sets.